Hi everyone, welcome to this module in the, the pain science coursework. You know, I think it's uh, really important as we begin to start to talk about this topic of pain that we get a historical perspective on, on where we came from and where we're going. You know, history uh, gives us a lot of information. It gives us information about where we've been, but also gives us insights into the future and where we need to go. So as we start to take a look at this journey into the pain sciences, I think it's really important that we start to talk about where we've been. I think historically, as you start to take a look at the different uh, parts of the pain sciences, uh, there was a lot of knowledge about pain science that was developed over the years, but a lot of it was based philosophically and didn't really have a, a firm setting behind it. The first beginnings of pain sciences really began about three, four hundred years ago. And during this time, there was a, a scientist that uh, might be familiar to a lot of you. His name was uh, Rene Descartes. In uh, 1664, he proposed uh, his theory of, or his treatise of man. And in that, uh, Descartes suggested that pain originated and was propagated from peripheral, peripherally in the pain tract and that it terminated in specific pain areas of the brain. His treatise took pain from a more of a mystical, emotional state of Plato and Aristotle, uh, where it was located more in the heart, to more of a sensory experience that was processed in the brain. Now, the theories of Descartes were great because it took us out of this more psychological realm and more into a scientific realm, where it was based more on nerves and sensations rather than emotions. Uh, but the one drawback into his theories was that it really proposed that there was one single system, one single system that originated in the periphery, and once it was propagated in the periphery, it made its way up the spine and into the brain, and, and then it was uh, terminated in a single section of the brain that we, he claimed was the pain region of the brain. Now, there are some problems with this, and it really set us back a little bit as we start to take a look at how we start to look at pain. Because the assumption that there is one set region of the brain and one set nerve, a single nerve tract that went all the way up and, and, and terminated in the brain, really set us back. Because what it did is it made this assumption that once pain was originated in, say, your foot, then there was no way to stop it. It got to the brain and... and and um, terminated in the brain and caused this reaction within the brain, which was pain. So the assumption of Descartes was that once pain got started in the foot or in the arm or in the leg, there was no stopping it. It resulted in pain because it activated a single area of the brain that was responsible for pain. It wasn't until maybe about uh, 300 years later that uh, there was an important discovery. And this important discovery was made by Melzack and Wall in 1965. Now, it's interesting that a lot of you have had coursework that dealt specifically with this. This uh, theory that they proposed, Melzack and Wall, was the gate theory of pain. And you've, noted, and you've noticed it and used it in terms of using TENS and these different types of electrical equipment that could help block pain. But beyond the whole clinical perspective of things, this was a very, very important discovery from the historical perspective in, in pain sciences. Because remember, when we start to take a look at the proposals of Descartes, he said there was one single nerve that started in the periphery and terminated in the region of the brain. What Melzack and Wall found was that this was not necessarily the case. Really, what there was at least one place where it stopped and then another nerve took its impulses and originated and took it up to the brain. And so the fact that they can outcompete pain fibers at the spinal cord was an important discovery because what it did is set the foundation for the fact that there was not a single nerve, but there's nerves that terminated at various aspects or varied regions of the body. And this is important because not only did it gives us opportunities to modulate it, like they did with uh, TENS machines and the gate theory, where it could be occupied, but also they set the stage for the fact that just because you had an injury or you had a pain that originated in the foot didn't necessarily mean 
that it was the same pain that got to the brain. And it also opened up the door for the fact that pain that originated in the foot didn't necessarily have to get all the way to the brain. It could be outcompeted by other sensory information. The same researcher, uh, Ronald Melzack, in 1990, he proposed uh, a concept called the neural matrix. Now, this neural matrix was really this, this joining or this intercollaboration of a lot of regions of the brain that were responsible for pain. Now, if you remember the, the concept of Descartes, Descartes really said that there was one single region of the brain responsible for pain. As you go through this coursework that we're talking about, you'll find that this is not necessarily the case. There's not a single region of the brain responsible for pain. Instead, it's responsible, the pain is generated by a interconnected network of regions of the brain. And this interconnected network of regions of the brain, Melzack called the neural matrix. Now, it could be known by a lot of other terms besides the neural matrix, things like um, neural signatures or neural tags, but all these different types of, of names for it is really just a, just a term that's utilized to, to signify the fact that there's a lot of regions of the brain that uh, interconnect to create this process or this experience of pain that we, that we and our patients experience. Now, Louis Gifford was important, uh, and I bring him up because he was a physical therapist, and he's also the president of the International Association for the Study of Pain. But Louis Gifford, what he brought to the table was the fact that he introduced a concept that pain was a process of, of several aspects. It was a process of inputting signals from the periphery that was then then processed in the brain. And after it was processed in the brain, it resulted in an output, which in this case was pain. So in Louis Gifford's model, what he had was damaged tissue in, in the periphery that sent signals to the brain. Once in the brain, the brain processed this information in a term he called scrutinizing it. And once it was scrutinized, it, there was an output response. In this case, in pain, uh, the th output response was the experience of pain. Now there's been varying models that kind of expanded upon this. And as we expand upon this, you see that whereas Gifford first proposed that there's input, and this input was tissue damage. Now we call this term nociception. So there was nociception that went up to the brain. It was processed in the brain, and then it resulted in this output of pain. But now as we've studied and we've explored this concept, we now realize it's much more complex than that. It's more complex in the fact that not only is nociception inputted into the brain, but also all the information that is inputted from the environment at that time is also inputted into the brain. So this would include interoception, this would include vision, hearing, smell, the emotions, the stress, all these different types of sensations that are experienced at the time of nociception or tissue damage get input into the brain. And this is an important concept. Keep this in mind because as research goes on and as we talk more about the science that underlies pain, you'll see that how critical this piece of information is. No longer is it just tissue damage and nociception that gets to the brain, but all the sensations, internal and from the environment, all the memories, all the stressors that are experienced at a, by the patient at the time of injury get routed up to the brain where it's processed. We'll get in a lot more into the processing that occurs. Just realize that the, when it's processed in the brain, all this information then results in an output response. Now, we used to think that it was just purely pain that was outputted, but also we realize now that there's also motor control that's affected, autonomic systems are affected, endocrine systems are affected, immune systems are affected, even our posture can be impacted by this processing that occurs as a result of the input that went in. Now, just food for thought as we end this module, I want you to think, because in the future modules, we're going to say, is this nociception that's processed, or this acute pain, is it the similar process that occurs in people with chronic pain? So in acute pain and in chronic pain, is there a difference? 
And if so, what is that difference? Food for thought for future modules. So that ends this today's module. Stay put, and we'll uh, catch you on future modules. See you around.